right? Now, let's start doing our activity. Read first the words that are in the table. Tuition fees, free education, graduate, illiteracy, and scholarship. As usual, you have to pay attention to the category of words we have. Let's see what kind of words we have. Tuition fees is a noun in the plural. Free education, a noun in the singular. It's a compound noun here. Graduate is a verb. Illiteracy, a noun. And scholarship also a noun in the singular. Now let's read the definitions together and see which one matches with each word. Inability to read and write. Financial aid given by governments to certain students. Money paid for attending private schools or universities. Hold a university degree. Education that doesn't require any payment. Focus now on the, uh, on the definitions and see which one start with a verb, which one would start with a noun that will make you able to do your activity, right? Inability to read and write, financial aid given by government, money paid for attending, and education, all these are nouns. The only verb we have is D, hold a university degree, so it matches with Good, it matches with graduate. Let's see now for the other ones. Let's start with the first. Tuition fees. Yes, this is the money paid for attending private schools or universities. Free education. Right, this means education that doesn't require any payment. As we saw already, to graduate, which is to hold a university degree, illiteracy, which is inability to read and write, good, and the last one, scholarship, which is financial aid given by governments to certain students. That's what, that was our vocabulary exercise today, Mr. Dahmas. The next part will deal with grammar. Thank you, Mrs. Belkhalil. If you learn the vocabulary seen so far, you will understand the reading passages in the back exam. What do you think, Mrs. Benkhadil? Yes, I suppose you have just heard Mr. Dahmas saying, if you read or if you learn your vocabulary exercise, you will be able to understand your baccalaureate text better, of course. So today we are going to deal with how to express the condition with if clauses. Let's start the first sentence. Study the example. If pupils work hard, they will have good results. What tense is used in the if clause? Good, it's the present tense. They will get good results. Which tense is used in the result clause? Right, we have the future simple here. Right, so what can we say? What type of if clauses is this? Yes, this is the first type of if clauses. Let's together fill in the gaps to get the rule of the first type of if clauses. If plus subject plus the gap, comma, in the second clause, subject, plus gap, right? Let's correct it. If plus subject plus present, okay? And then in the result close, subject and future. Of course, we use this type of conditional type one to express a possible condition in the f and its results in the future. Now consider this example. If pupils work hard, they will have good results. If we say this sentence, if we put this sentence in the negative, we'll get 
If pupils don't work hard, they won't have good results. Now pay attention to this sentence. Unless the pupils work hard, they won't have good results. What changes do you notice? Yes, we replaced if by unless. And, yes, the second change is that we change the form of the verb in the if clause from negative to affirmative. So what does that mean? It means that unless is or can be replaced by if and the negative form. So we can say that if equals if and not. Right? For better understanding, here are a few other examples. Let's read them together. If the pupils don't understand the lesson, they will not answer correctly. As you notice here, in the if clause, we have a negative form of the verb. So we can replace it by unless very easily. Unless the pupils understand the lesson, they will not answer correctly. Right? Let's move to the second example. If you work hard, you will not regret it. As you can see this time, the if clause, in the if clause, the verb is in the affirmative form, but in the, the result clause or the main clause, the verb is in the negative. So it's also easy to transform. So the sentence will be, unless you work hard, you will regret it. This time we'll suppress the negative form in the main clause. And the last one, if he succeeds with distinction, he will register at the Faculty of Medicine. Of course, the two parts here are in the affirmative form. So what will happen? Right? Unless he succeeds with distinction, he will not register at the Faculty of Medicine. Is it clear? Right. Let's move to the practice now. Rewrite sentence B so that it means the same as A. If you listen to the BBC News, you will improve your English pronunciation. Start the sentence with you and then a gap to complete unless you. Pay attention here. We started sentence A with if. But the if clause in sentence B in the second part. Pay attention not to make mistakes. Second example. We will miss the school bus unless we hurry. This time we want you to rewrite the sentence using if. So start with we. If we. Okay. Third sentence. Unless you do more exercises, you won't get ready for the final exam. Start sentence B, starting with, start sentence B with, if you, and go on. And the last one, if she gets the right training, she will be successful. And you start the sentence with, unless she, and complete the sentence. Right? Let's correct now. The first sentence. If you listen to the BBC News, you will improve your English pronunciation. You have to rewrite it using unless in the middle. This will give, you will not improve or you won't improve your English pronunciation unless you listen to the BBC News. Second sentence. We will miss the school bus unless we hurry. The correction is, we will miss the school bus if we don't hurry. Sentence three, unless you do more exercises, you won't get ready for the final exam. And the sentence will be, if you don't do more exercises, you won't get ready for the final exam. And the last sentence, if she gets the right training, she will be successful. Unless she gets the right training, she won't be successful. 
Right, good. Now let's move to other types of if clauses. Study the following example. I don't have a computer, but if I had one, it would help me. What tense is used in the if clause? Good, the past simple. What tense is used in the result clause? Right, this is the conditional, that is would plus the verb in the stem form, which is the verb in the infinitive without to. When do we use this type of conditional? We use it, so the second type, we use the second type when we refer to something which is unreal in the present situation. As we saw in the example, he doesn't have a computer, so he said, I don't have a computer. If I had one, so we, we refer to the present, but because it's unreal in the present. So we use the past simple, okay? Fill in the gaps now to get the rule as we did for type one. If plus the subject plus a gap, comma, plus the subject of the main clause and a gap, right? If plus the subject plus the past simple, comma, and the subject of the main clause and would plus stem, that is the conditional, present conditional in this situation. Okay? Now let's move to another type of if clauses. Study the following sentence. You worked hard, so you succeeded with distinction. As you can see, this is a past situation. Now let's suppose the opposite. If you hadn't worked hard, you wouldn't have succeeded. What tense is used in the if clause this time? Right, this time we have the past perfect tense in the if clause. And which tense do we have in the result clause? Good, this time we have the past conditional, that is, would, have, plus the past participle of the verb. And when do we use this type of if clauses, so which is the type 3? We use it when we refer to something that is opposite to a past situation. And this kind of situation is impossible because the action is already finished. Right? Now let's move to the practice. Rewrite sentence B so that it means the same as A. First sentence, Jane didn't find a job in her specialty, so she accepted anyone. Start sentence B with, if Jane, write second sentence. Ryan doesn't hold a university degree, so he doesn't get a good job. Start sentence B with, if Ryan. Sentence three, read more and you will enrich your vocabulary. If you, and finish the sentence. Sentence four, pupils often neglect their homework because they spend most of their time chatting. Let's suppose now, if pupils, right. And the last sentence, Sarah took a course in management because she didn't get the required marks to enter the faculty of medicine. Let's suppose the opposite, if Sarah, and finish the sentence, right? Now let's move to the correction. We we'll correct sentence by sentence, okay? For sentence one, if Jane had found a job in her specialty, she wouldn't have accepted anyone. We use type three because the situation given was in the past. Good. Second sentence, if Ryan held a university degree, he would get a good job. Here we use type two because the situation was given in the present. The third sentence, if you read more, you will enrich your vocabulary. This is type one first. 
Sentence four, if pupils didn't, didn't spend most of their time chatting or their free time chatting, they wouldn't neglect their homework. As you notice here, the, in the if clause, the verb is in the past simple, but in the negative. And the last sentence, if Sarah had got the required mark to enter the faculty of medicine, she wouldn't have taken a course in management. Right. That was the correction of our grammar activity, Mr. Dahmas. Thank you, Mrs. Mahli. You're welcome. If I were you, I would work hard to pass my back exam and go to university. The third part of our session today deals with sound system. Pay attention to the pronunciation of the final S in the coming words, in the following words. Exams, courses, parents. You have certainly noticed that the final S is pronounced differently. Mrs. Benkhlil, is there any specific rule on how to pronounce the final S in English? Yes, of course. And this is our lesson today. Okay. We'll deal with how to pronounce the final S. Listen carefully. Mr. Dahmas is going to read a series of words. Pay attention to the final S. And then classify it in the table according to its pronunciation. It can be heard S, Z, or IS. Schools, mathematics, garages, parents, inspectors, exams, colleagues, advances, politicians, hopes, rubs, riches, quizzes, finds, managers, finishes, proofs, universities, fellows, riches, months. Right? I suppose that you'd had enough time to put each word in the category that corresponds. Let's correct together. The first column deals with the S heard as S. Which words? Okay, mathematics, parents, hopes, proofs, and maths. Right. The second column, the final S is heard Z, as in the words schools, inspectors, exams, colleagues, politicians, rubs, finds, improves, fellows, and universities. Pay attention here. Some pupils may say universities, in, we heard is, but the final E, university, is in the root word. So the final S is just heard Z, as in babies also, universities. Pay attention, not to, pay, not to make a mistake. Let's move to the third column. When the S is heard is, as in garages, sorry, garages, advances, quizzes, manages, finishes, and reaches. Mr. Dahmas asked me if we had a rule to help you. Let's draw it together. Let's move to the first column. Which sound do you hear before the final S? Mathematic, k, parent, t, hope, p, proof, f, and math, th. So we can say that we use the final S is pronounced s after the sounds k, t, p, f, and th. Let's move to the second column. Which, which sound do you hear before the final S? L, R of inspector, M, G, N of politician, B, D, V. The, the vowel sound in follow, because the W is not pronounced, follow, we, have, we hear a vowel sound, and the vowel sound in university. So we can say, we draw the rule, the final S is pronounced Z after the sounds L, R, M, G, N, B, V, 
D plus the vowel sounds. And the last column, as in we hear the final S is, when the final sound before the S is J, as in garage, advance, S, Z in quiz, J in manage, finish, sh, and reach, sh. So we can say that the final S is pronounced is after the sounds. Yes, s, z, j, j, sh, or ch. Right, now let's practice. Classify these words according to the pronunciation of their final S. Well, I'm not going to read them because if I read the words, it will help you. So you have to do it. I leave you two minutes. That's right. Let's correct. The final S is heard S. All right, let's correct. The final S is heard S in books, develops, scholarships, proofs. It's heard Z in rules, fellows, inspectors, and libraries. And the last one, it's heard is in passages, boxes, reaches, and manages. Right, that was the last part of our sound system exercise, Mr. Dahmas. Thank you, Mrs. Ben Khalil. That was the, the last part, certainly. In the next session, we'll go on dealing with education. In grammar, we'll focus on expressing similarity and difference and expressing obligation. Get ready. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye. Goodbye.